about whether things are like inherently favorable and whether things are like favorable right now. In terms of inherent favorability, we're talking about things like our delta G naught prime. We can talk about it being inherently favorable to pass electrons from something with a lower reduction potential to something with a higher reduction potential. So that's an example of something that would be inherently favorable. But is it favorable right now? What would be the actual change in free energy that we would get at this moment? For that, we need to think about the delta G, not the delta G naught prime. Well, we still need to think about the delta G naught prime because it's going to come into the equation. But we also have to think about the ratio of products to reactants that is our Q. If we have, we want a negative delta G, if we want things to be favorable in the forward direction, we don't just want our delta G naught prime to be negative, but we want the actual, this second part of the equation to be negative. How do we get that to be negative? Well, here, basically, the natural log of something that is less than 1 will give us a negative number. So we want this ratio to be less than 1. So our ratio of products to reactants, how do we make that less than 1? We want to have a lot of our reactants compared to products. Makes sense, right? Le Chatelier's whole thing. Like, if you have a bunch of your reactants, you're going to be driven towards products. If you have a bunch of your products, you're going to have to be driven towards reactants. And, like, the actual amount, like, how big that ratio needs to be to skew things one way or another is going to depend on your delta G naught prime and how big that is, what direction, and all that good stuff. But bottom line, we have our delta G naught prime. This is going to tell us about like inherent favorability, but then we have to take into account the actual conditions like our concentrations. We can do this for all sorts of reactions, including redox reactions. In a redox reaction, we're passing electrons from one thing onto another thing. And so how is this, when would this be favorable? Well, it would be favorable inherently if the thing that you're giving the electrons to wants it more than the thing that had the electrons in the beginning. And so this is why if we take something like carbon and we give electrons from carbon to oxygen, boom, lots of energy, combustion, all that good stuff. But we don't want things going kaboom in our cells. Instead, we pass off energy from carbon to oxygen in like little piecewise steps going from something like a fat, something like a sugar, um, transferring electrons from that into something that wants those electrons more so it has a higher reduction potential, but not as high as oxygen, which has that super duper crazy high reduction potential, which makes it such a great um, source to kind of like drive things through this pathway, drive the production of ATP. And we talked about how we had to use a lot of energy in order to keep ATP levels high because our cells use conditions where the ATP to ADP ratio is so high to make ATP so favorable, make this ratio so low so that ATP hydrolysis is favorable that it makes it hard to make ATP from ADP in an organic phosphate, but we could use the energy from oxidation in order to do so. So oxidation is often involves is is often involved in catabolism, so breaking down molecules. We don't just break down the molecules, instead we oxidize them as we go. We take those electrons from those molecules and pass them onto carriers like NAD+ and FAD and NADPH. Now typically when it comes to catabolism, we're not seeing NADPH Plus. Instead, we're seeing NAD+. Plus. NAD+, plus is going to act as our oxidant. It's going to oxidize some reduced thing, like our, glu like our glucose or something. It becomes then reduced to NADH, and we end up with the oxidized thing. Now, we can calculate, we can have a delta G naught for this that we can get from like tables of comparing the standard reduction potentials of the of one thing to of another thing. And if we're passing electrons from the reduced thing onto NAD plus and the NAD plus ones it more, well now we're gonna have something that's gonna be favorable. We'll get a delta, negative delta G naught prime and we can do calculations and look in tables and all that good stuff. But we also need to take into account the concentration of our products and of our reactants that is in this case, not only is it matter our reduced, the concentrations of our reduced and our oxidized thing, but also the concentrations of our NAD plus or, and our NADH. So in this case, our Q is going to equal the concentration of our oxidized thing times NADH over the concentration of our reduced thing 
times NAD plus. So this reduced thing, this oxidized thing, yeah, those are going to matter, but those are going to be different in each case. But what's similar, if we want to use NAD plus as kind of like this universal electron carrier, this part's going to be the same. And so now let's look at this. If we look at the ratio of NADH to NAD+, if we want this to be favorable in the forward direction, that is if we want to use NAD+, to oxidize things, such as we would have in catabolism, we would want to have this ratio. How would we want to have this ratio? We want to make it less than 1. We want to have a lot more of our reactants. We want to have a lot more of our NAD+. So in order for this to actually give us a bunch of energy by oxidizing something um, using NAD+, we need to keep NAD+, concentrations high. So we want to have a high NADH to um, an NAD+, to NADH ratio and a low NADH to NAD+, ratio. So when we talk about catabolism, That typically involves oxidation, and so we're going to want to use NAD+. So we want high ratio of NAD+, so we want lots of our reactants and not much of our products. So that is going to be good for catabolism. But our cells don't just want to break things down. We also want to make things. And so when we make things, we have anabolism. So anabolism often involves reduction. But just like we saw in when we were talking about ATP, how we didn't want to like go backwards and we couldn't go backwards from those high energy producing reactions um, because then basically we would be too high of energy. We make favorite conditions favorable for ATP hydrolysis that makes it unfavorable inherently for the, or not inherently, but as a result, by definition, if we're making ATP hydrolysis favorable, we're making the ATP um, formation unfavorable if we were to just reverse things. So instead of using NAD plus and trying to keep this high ratio of NAD plus where we would have it be really, really unfavorable to then go backwards the other direction if we want to use NADH as a reducing agent, instead, let's use something else. So instead, let's gonna say, okay, let's use NAD plus. So we can basically say, okay, well here, we're going to have an oxidized thing plus an NADPH, and that's going to take us to something where we're then going to have NADP+. And we would have our oxidized thing, and we would have our reduced thing. Okay, so now what would we want of our ratio? Here we would want basically a ratio where we have a lot of our reactants. And so in this case, we want a lot of our reactants to be NADPH. So we want high concentration of our NADPH compared to our NADP+. Under these conditions, then we can get favorable interactions we can get favorable um, reactions to happen in which we're reducing things. So we can make reduction more possible by skewing the concentrations of these so that even if it's not inherently favorable to go this direction, we're making it favorable because we're using, um, taking advantage of the fact that we can, we can manipulate these ratios. We can manipulate the ratios in a way that's going to make it so that we can have favorable reduction reactions where we're putting electrons from something that doesn't want it as much, um, that wants it more, to something that doesn't want it as much, which would be inherently unfavorable. We can change these concentrations in order to make that favorable. But we wouldn't want to do that to our NAD our NAD plus and our NADH ratio at the, because then basically that would make it unfavorable. So by using these separate pools, we're able to separately regulate the NAD and the NADP in order to use NAD for the catabolism and NADP for the anabolism.
And so this is why we keep these separate pools. We can regulate them separately. We can catabolize and anabolize at the same time, and we can have these reactions be favorable in both directions so that we can have reactions actually happen. But we favor one in one direction and one in the other direction. We can have different enzymes that are going to use these different pools. And then we can also use the pool, like the ratio in these pools to tell us about the energy conditions in the cell. So bottom line, delta G naught prime, that's coming based on like the standard potential reduction potentials. You want to go from something with a lower standard reduction potential to something that the higher standard reduction potential. We can do this little pieces going from something to like NAD um, plus to give us NADH, which is then going to give it to oxygen, which wants it really, really a lot. So we get energy, but we're getting it in these stepwise pieces. And so we'll see in the oxidative phosphorylation, we'll actually pass it from thing, one thing that wants it to one thing that wants it more to one thing that wants it more to one thing that wants it more, breaking up these little bursts of energy to pump protons, which can then power the ATP as pump and make ATP. But we do that little piecewise using these universal carriers um, that themselves we can make favorable in at this current moment by manipulating the concentrations. This is going to allow us to do things where we can have reduction reactions be favorable and we can have oxidation reactions be favorable. We can regulate these separately. We can do all these things. Plus, we typically like compartmentalize inside the cells, so we do a lot of the like anabolism in the mitochondria where we can we can manipulate concentrations, so they're more favorable for that. But that's why we want that high ratio of our NAD plus to NADH, so that we can make NAD plus be useful for oxidation, and then we want our high ratio of NADPH to NADP plus to have a, that be favorable for our reduction for our anabolism. So both of these are important. It's just like when we talked about wanting that high ATP ADP ratio in order to make ATP hydrolysis really, really favorable. So take concentrations into account and that's that.